Hi, I'm going to cover today some of the physical and metaphysical aspects of the clearing exercise that a lot of people enjoy doing after or before a Tai Chi set or before or after a Qigong set. And you can do this with anything. You can also do this before and after meditation or dance or yoga or any practice that you enjoy. Internal arts, external arts, etc. Now it's very, very simple. What you do is you just stand with your feet apart. And you're going to come up and breathe in and then empty out. And that's OK, but you've got to pay attention to what you're doing inside and why. First of all, you want to drain your chest. So let all that excess air we hold in there, let it go. Imagine you're getting a massage and you're doing a sigh of relief. <sighs> that will give you instant sung, relaxed shoulders and body an instant han xiong, emptied chest as well. Now what that does is it takes the burden of all that pressure that we hold in our body, it takes it off the heart, the lungs, and some of the major blood vessels and organs that sit in that part of the body. And it will also drop your center of gravity. Okay, so that's the first thing. Do that, take a chest breath, and then dump it out. <sighs> Let your hands just go down. Now, let all of that breathing happen in your lower abdomen, your dantian. So what you want to do is inhale generously. If you have trouble with that, imagine a, an eyedropper upside down or a turkey baster. And this is the tube and this is the bulb. So imagine if you let go of that squeezing on the bulb and you let go, it would would suction everything deep down into that bulb. So try that. Imagine that's tense. And then just let it all go. And then inhale and fill it all up. Very important when you do this. A lot of people don't talk about this. Tuck your low back. Why? There's a very physical reason, not just an energetic one. The physical reason is that your diaphragm, your quote-unquote breathing muscle, finishes attaching. It inserts to your low back. Yes, that is the anchor. That is the anchor point of your dantian and your diaphragm. Okay, your diaphragm is up here. The dantian is an area. And it anchors down to the front of my low back. So if you could cut this open, front of my low back spine. Right on the spine it connects. So it can affect your posture, and your posture can affect your breathing and your energy flow. Really important. Also, your pelvis, your bowl, as it's called in Latin, shouldn't be tipping its contents out, right? You want to hold your organs where they belong with gravity and also hold that energy that you're going to accumulate so it can travel through you and not just tip out. So when you do this, tuck. Relax, <sighs> drain out, and then just kind of let all your weight go down into the floor. Now, stretch through your fingers. Okay, remember, don't let your fingers just hang there like dead meat. <laughs> stretch through them. Then inhale generously, keeping tucked. All the way up, way up there. Okay, a lot of people stop here, but you know what? Let your Scapulae, your scapula bones here, slide a little bit on your back. So you want to stretch up even higher. You should feel the stretch down here, and that will get all those tendons in here from the pecs and you know, the lats. Stretch it out. Plus, you have lymph nodes and lymph vessels flowing through there. Stretch that. So don't just go here. Go here. Also, try to put your arms in line with your ears. You get a much better stretch, much better therapy, much better chi flow through your meridians. So, way up there, tuck. Then, when you can't stretch anymore and you start to exhale, <sighs> let your hands drop and then imagine everything relaxing. So you can also energetically imagine that through your palms, especially through that Lao Gong point, that you're scanning through and normalizing all the energy in your body. On the outside, you can think about you're scanning through your aura. And inside, you can imagine that you're just like running some kind of a laser light or a chi light through you. 
and normalizing everything. You can think about relaxing down. Now, don't let your hands come too far forward. Bring them back a little. That will also give you a great stretch in your pecs. It will open up here. You've got your long meridian points, one and two. That will release a lot of pressure. And then lower your elbows from here. When you reach this part of your body, notice here I'm sinking. Notice it. Sinking, sinking, sinking. When it comes to your waist area, you rise and just press down your shoulders and let it exit the belly of your fingers. That's that first proximal phalange, that first chunk segment of your fingers. And then if you need to, inhale a little and then exhale again. And then press through your feet. Press through. I tend to press more on my heels because that elicits more of a soothing or relaxing response, whereas the front, if you go a little bit on the front of the foot, that elicits more of an action response. Here I want to actually calm the action down. So again, drain your chest, <sighs> relax, inhale, but keep it more here. Don't heave your chest. Drain it, inhale, expand it, front and back. Imagine you're filling up your dantian with chi. Bring it in. Stretch to your maximum. Start to exhale. And then let gravity do its thing. Pull back a little bit here and then relax. Then you can let it round out again a little here. Down, 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 around waist area. You come up and your hands keep pushing down. They don't actually push down, they just kind of go down. If anything, you're pushing through your shoulders through so that you get all of that open. Tuck, oh, please keep tucked. And then just relax. Then you can actually come back into wuji stance and just breathe a moment, keeping your head in alignment and your lower back in alignment. You've got very important energy centers going through you. You've got to keep them aligned and free so that they're not pinched off. Now, another thing that you can do with this exercise, it's a little bit more metaphysical, but it's great. It's a great visualization, and I believe it actually attracts that energy in, too. When you inhale, or when you open up, this symbolizes I'm ready to receive. Okay, you can also see that in yoga when they're in that certain meditation position and the hands are up. It's a very receptive, open, very free feeling. You can only receive something if, you, if you're not clenching. So if somebody wants to hand a gift to you, you can't receive it if your hands are all full of stuff and you're struggling. It's very easy. Just drop what you're doing and accept it with kindness and with gratitude. So you want to have that feeling before you even receive it. Feeling of gratitude. That's important. That seems a little backwards in our thinking because we're used to expressing gratitude after we receive something. But remember, really in space and time, time doesn't really exist. It's a linear illusion, but it really doesn't exist. So accept it, gratitude, then inhale and receive it. Receive it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. You can think of divine energy. You can think, you can use any religion that you belong to and think of pulling in divine energy or think of the energy from the Tao, the universe, that powerful creative source. And notice that your hands are up here. When you put your arms in alignment like this with your ears and you start to pull down, you're pulling over the top of your head. You're welcoming into the Bai Hui point up here, which is the highest acupoint on your head. How do you locate it? Quick way to do it, quick and dirty way. <laughs> Put your fingers behind your ears. Imagine that you're making a headband and where they meet on your head approximately in that area. So it's not totally up here. On the, it's a tiny bit back. And it's also where you pull yourself up. Okay, and this is where the Chinese also believe that you connect your Shen or your spirit energy to the universe. So receive it. Receive it spiritually, not just materialistically, even if you do need a material thing. Bring it in. Receive it. Let it rain down 
through you internally and outside of you externally. Be thankful for it. Enjoy it. Shower in it. Absorb it. You can think of that anything as you need it to be. You can think of it as sunlight pouring in. You can do this outside in the moonlight if you need to kind of cool or calm yourself down. If you're very depressed, this is a great exercise to do in the rising sun, the energy of the rising sun in the morning. Even if you have a night job, get up, go out, absorb it, then go back to sleep. <laughs> but try that and wash it through you and breathe. And if you run out of breath, it's OK. Just keep it low. Inhale, and then just <sighs> exhale. Another thing, too, make sure you exhale fully. Sometimes you think you're done exhaling, and there's still some more stuck in there. So just <sighs> really get rid of it. To hold on to, stale air is a form of energetic constipation. It's a waste product. It really is. All that CO2 and all that junk, don't hold it in you. Get rid of it. Send it back to the universe to compost it. The universe will take care of it. If you don't get rid of the old, you can never make room for the new. And the more you build your capacity, the more you empty out the old, the more capacity you have to receive the new. Okay, That's both physically with oxygen and metaphysically with spiritual gifts. I know it sounds a little odd, but it's really true if you think about it. If your mind and everything is cluttered and your inside is cluttered, you can't take, you can't assimilate in anything new. It just won't happen. So feel free to give a little extra uh, to get that all cleared out. And I bet you're going to feel good when you do that. Try it. OK, again, receive, receptive, joining with it, becoming one with it, accepting it, taking it and then being responsible for using it. <sighs> Tuck your back. You're going to feel a nice straight line. Sometimes you'll feel little crackles in your spine. You're working out adhesions. You're realigning your vertebrae. <sighs> Keep tucked. <sighs> and then just shake out sometimes. That feels good, too. That's a real good way to get that off of you. Some people like to do this, too, symbolically taking all the weight of the world off of their shoulders and just getting rid of it. That, try that. That is energetically very soothing, too. And the reflex that it gives your mind and body is one of letting go and being free. Now, the last thing I'd like to mention is think about yourself as one big receiving unit. You can tune into anything you want, just like a radio. So your radio just sits there. You put the electricity in it, and it has the capacity to tune into a very wide range of frequencies. All you have to do is your intent and your action. Same thing with this. What would you like to tune into? Do you need a new job in your life? Would you like to have something resolved? Do you need to be soothed mentally? Would you like to bring more love into your life or more friends? Would you like to Get rid of a bad feeling that you've been harboring or that's been hurting you or a bad memory or, um, or maybe a sickness or something that you want to clear. You can use this exercise. Think about what do you want to tune into. Turn on the radio. Tune into it. You can kind of stand there for a little moment, tuck. Be ready to receive it so the strongest, most sensitive radio can receive even the weakest signal that's far out there. Okay, and that your structure will do that for you. And then let that action occur and let it express. And here's a really good place to say thank you. In the Chinese arts, we usually use a Bao Chuan that's a little bit more Confucian. Um, you can also use the Buddhist bow, or if you want, you can also use the more Hindu bow, namaste. Or you can, you know, if, if you do the sign of the cross, if you pray, you can use that as well. You can turn this into whatever you need it to. It's, don't be afraid of it like it's some weird, you know, Chinese foreign thing. It's yours. It's natural. It doesn't have a face or an ethnicity. It's part of nature. Nature doesn't have an ethnicity. It just is. It's just always been. So tune into that, okay? whatever that means to you. 
And I'd love to hear if you use this in any clever way and how this has helped you. That way you can take something that people do and they just, and you can turn it into something much more and more powerful and magical. And if you have that mindset, I think you will really start seeing the results as I have. So I'd love to hear from you on this. Use it and be well.